I'm Will Sturgeon. I worked with Professor Andrew Saunders in the Graduate School of Architecture here at Penn over the summer with Cecily Nishimura, another Penn undergrad, as well as Jesse Allen, a Penn graduate architecture student. Uh, this is a brief overview of our project, uh, which I'm calling Neural Architectures. Uh, essentially, the idea behind the project was to see if, in the end, architects could be quote-unquote replaced by machines. And what are the ramifications of this? How can architects work with machines rather than against them? Um, how can we incorporate some machine learning aspects into the design process in a way that feels natural and not kind of um, just like a, a passing trend? Um, how can we turn them into meaningful results, not just conceptually um, you know, this would be interesting if statements. Um, so that's the general framework for the project. And essentially where we started is by reading a bunch of papers uh, defining well-established methods of image manipulation. So generally, um, normally you would hear about machine learning concepts where it takes an image and maps to you know, one of 10 outputs saying this is a dog or cat or building or, you know, etc. cetera. Um, in this case, these networks map from one image to another image instead of some kind of classification. So for example, on the left here under style transfer, um, you can take a content image, which is represented on the left and a style image, which is represented on the right. And through a process of iteratively changing each pixel, just a tiny amount every time, um, it can take the content image and change in a very complicated algorithmic way um, that's, uh, I'm not gonna go into depth here, but essentially by changing individual pixels in a controlled overseen way, you can preserve the content of an image while changing the style. So this is kind of Monet's Rouen Cathedral um, if he were looking at College Hall here at Penn instead. Um, and essentially, this is great. It's been used since 2015 on paintings and various um, artistic styles. But we thought, what if we could take some kind of random image rather than a uh, uh, content image like this with some meaningful representation? Um, this, as if you zoom in, it's basically just white noise. Um, grayscale images that just are consisting of pixels anywhere from zero to one randomly. Um, so if it takes that, then it makes all of the content itself because there's no meaningful content here. Um, so I gave it, for example, in this one, uh, this is the diagram of Palladio's Filo Rotunda. And essentially it takes um, these sections that it makes of different, you know, sections of houses, portions of things that could be. Um, and there's an illustration of little dots that this came from, just through the same process of iteratively adding sections that adhere to the style. Um, here are some other, a few examples using an architectural drawing, um, just a, a line drawing in pen, and this is what it comes up with. Um, again, not as clean. There, um, there, it seems to be a sequence of rules that generate a good image, and we don't really know what they are yet. It's more of trial and error, um, and that's, the other interesting finding, um, even when you have something that we've successfully generated, it's generally, it yields better results to, at least we've found, it yields better results if you let the image generate something, or let the network generate an image, and then allow your human artistic side to interpret the image however you want, and go on to the next step. Um, that's kind of one of the takeaways that we've found, but in the end, we still wanted to push it and see, can we fully automate this process? So that's what we did here. Um, this on the left is the style image. It's just a Google Maps overview of someone's backyard and pool. Um, and this is the content image of basically just random black and white values in this kind of curving um, ridged view. So essentially it copies, for example, this shape right here uh, that looks kind of like a, um, a crescent. It takes that and puts it over here as you know a pool deck. Um, it's really amazing what these networks can do. Um, but of course, right now we can't uh, move it into three dimensions. It's only two dimensional at the moment. But 
given an image like this that kind of encodes um, you know shadows designating that something's above something else or something like that we can take this and generate it into a complex 3d model um, and you can kind of tile these and make a whole neighborhood it's very interesting very cool and very unfinished um, so the next places that we're looking for future research is possibly embedding this whole process in three dimensions the whole time. And the difficult part about this is that, um, like I mentioned in the beginning, most neural networks are trained to recognize a dog or a cat or some kind of object. And these networks take something that's already been trained on two-dimensional data and then just use it in a way that it's not really supposed to. And the trick is that no one has really done that for three dimensions yet. So if we're going to do this, we have to either wait a few years or more interestingly, try to make our own. And that is the point of future research. Thank you.